Hello everyone, welcome to the next video in my Lolo Man build series. Um, if you missed the first part, I made these um, little drive cartridges. There's going to be a total of six of these. And the reason that these are so tiny is Lolo Man is the slimmest beetle weight combat robot ever. So the internal volume is only about 10 millimeters and the overall height is only about 20. So everything needs to be nice and thin. So in this video, we're going to be building the battery cartridge for low, low man. And as you can see, it is still only about 10 millimeters thick. And um, this is what it looks like. So let's get started and show you what the battery cartridge looks like for low, low man. Lolo Man, in effect, is the next predecessor of Long Long Man, another beetle weight that I made eh, maybe six months or a year ago, something like that. And it is a weaponless robot, it is just kind of a design concept sort of thing. So it's just meant to be really low to the ground and that's about it. So it doesn't really need a whole lot in terms of battery. So I wanted to make a custom battery pack um, simply because the size of the robot kind of warrants it. And it's really difficult to find a 4S battery or a 4C cell battery that is this thin. So I had to make a custom one and I wanted to have everything kind of in one little cartridge um, just because the whole rest of the design, which you'll see later when I show the full overview, I just kind of wanted it to be clean, neat, and tidy. So I found these um, little batteries off of Hobby King. They were actually on sale and I'll open these up later when I do the assembly or I'll open them up right now. Um, these were a really amazing deal. Um, they're a 260 milliamp hour battery, a single cell. I think they're only maybe like eight millimeters, seven millimeters thick, something like that. And it was five of these for a buck 30. So these were like 20 cents or something like that. So it was a really good deal. Um, I was looking for single cell batteries and I just happened to see these. So that's what I'll be using. So let me open this up and just kind of give you an idea of what this whole thing is. So we basically just have two screws that hold on this little um, cap. I think I've called this like the battery cap. And um, basically this is just for the wiring. Um, so there's four individual cells, like I showed before, there's just four of these inside this little container. And then they're just kind of bust together in series to give us um, four cells. That's really all there is to it. Now, I could have hardwired all this together. I could have done a lot of different things. You can definitely take apart these cells and make your own kind of thing. I wanted to keep the individual cells because this um, wiring harness is really easy to replicate and it's really easy to swap out. It's also really easy to swap out an individual cell if that's a problem. So I just kind of made this harness that plugs into the individual batteries. And then if we unplug a battery, um, I gotta take out this. This is just kind of a um, cap that covers the back. Most of this is just because um, printing and overhangs and 3D printing, I couldn't print this as it is without this um, little bottom cap. So let me show you that. And all these threads are once again, just threaded into the Nylon X directly and it holds just fine. So this is just a little cap. You can see that there's little, um, I don't know, bosses in there that just kind of click into it like that. So it holds it nice and tight. And this battery should be free to come out. And there you go. So that's really all there is to it. It's just these um, individual cells that are held inside this carrier. There's a little cover that cleans up all the wiring and keeps that from being exposed. And then you just have this little bottom cap down here. Now I did have to do some modification to these batteries. They have this strange kind of um, little JST connector on there. That's the only thing they call it is just a JST. I know JST is a brand of connectors, not a specific connector, but anyway, it just has this little um, JST connector on there. So I had to shorten that and then also add my own connector on there as well. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna modify these batteries, um, reheat shrink them because why not, and then assemble the whole battery pack. So let's do that.
So before we go too much further in this video, I did want to point out some safety stuff. Um, even these little tiny batteries can be kind of dangerous. You know, I mean, you get stored energy right here. So even taking off this heat shrink, resoldering, there's a lot of things that I will point out later. Um, this isn't what I would consider a beginner thing to do if you're dealing with this for the very first time maybe this isn't the thing that you should be doing but this is still good information to get you a little bit more educated on batteries so that being said let's go ahead and um, get these re-terminated with uh, shorter wires on them the thing that you want to pay attention to with batteries is that they are live you know there's live electricity going on right here so the last thing you want to do is cut the connector like that don't do that because when you cut through it's going to short both the positive and negative together and if you're going to be doing one wire to re-terminate it and then the other make sure they don't touch you know just treat this like it's absolutely live and it's going to hurt you which it can so I'm just going to snip off one of the wires and then I'm going to snip off the other. Now, if you want to be really safe, these are relatively small packs, but you could tape the other one behind it so that you know there's no way that those could touch. There's a pretty low risk of them touching right now, but you know, just to be safe. So I'm just gonna make sure I don't touch both of them at the same time. And so I'm just getting these um, roughly the same size. I'm using um, this little kit I got off of Amazon. Um, I can send a link if you want in the description down below. Um, but this is just, um, yeah, a little kit with all the little shells. This is just two pin only, but it has all the little metal pins and the little plastic housings. And then over here, I've got some crimpers as well. So I'm gonna be using that to re-terminate these guys. So I'm using my wire strippers and I'm just gonna strip off uh, maybe just a couple millimeters or so at the end. And notice I only strip one and then I'm going to terminate this, put it in the housing and then move on to the other one. I'm not gonna terminate them both at the same time because that could cause some issues. Um, now with these pins, you've got two different types. You've got the, um, I guess the female ones and then somewhere in here, these are the male pins, so we're going to be using um, the female pins, which will give us this guy. And then one of these little connectors right there. The other thing to pay attention to is make sure that your polarity on these is good. Um, so I'm just going to be matching this one. Every crimper is going to be a little bit different, but for these guys, I use this furthest one out. I kind of get it in there like that kind of half latched into place, feed in my wire. And there you go, and that's all there is to it. And you can see it's nice and crimped down. And then we're just going to insert this into the little sleeve and I think it goes like that. And that's all there is to it. So that's all it takes to re-terminate one of these guys. Always make sure you kind of give it a little tug to make sure it's in there nice. And then the little tab that's up there is going to key into the little hole right there. And there we go. We have a re-terminated wire. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other three of these off camera and um, let's go put new heat shrink on this guy. Always be very careful with batteries. Just treat them like they're a live bomb or something like that. So I just cut a little bit into the heat shrink that was on here and I'm just very carefully removing it. This of course is not a necessary step. I just want to color code uh, my batteries. I'm gonna have green ones and I'm gonna have yellow ones so I can differentiate between one pack and the other. Um, but realistically, I couldn't get these labels off cleanly. Um, they just wouldn't pull off nice and there's like a serial number and everything. It's just a cosmetic thing. So there we go. So I'm using this um, heat shrink. This is actually made for 18650 cells, which are those um, you know, rounds, kind of like AA size cells. 
and um, this is PVC. So you notice it's a little bit different than like the rubber uh, heat shrink that you're normally used to seeing. Uh, this is PVC and it melts uh, quite a bit quicker and a lot lower temp. You don't need to have the temp on it for as long, which is good because this is a battery and you don't want to heat it up too much. So I'm just gonna cut this down to size, heat shrink it, and we'll be good to go. I wanted to mention one little trick before I moved on. Um, if you get one of these in the wrong spot, you can just use a hobby knife to push down that little tab and pull the wire out. So if you just push down on that tab, it comes right out and you'll have to just sit there and lift it back up. But that is how you can uh, modify these if you get them wrong. And we just need to pull that tab up so it catches, that should catch, and it'll just click right in. There it is. And for like a servo cable, you can kind of do the same thing, but you actually have to lift up on the plastic housing. So we can just put it in right there. These are sometimes a little tricky. Lift up the little tab and then it pulls right out and then you can snap it back in. So this is pretty useful for uh, modifying existing cable assemblies. So for this PVC stuff, I'm just using the low setting and I'm just gonna go nice and slow with it. There you go, four new batteries. So um, let's go ahead and assemble everything. Okay, so I'll put on this um, back. I've already um, pre-tapped all of this. So this should just go right on. There it goes. Okay, so now it's time to attach the little harness and let's get a closer look at the harness. So basically got positive and negative coming out and you can see positive and then negative goes to positive, positive goes to negative. So it's just basically positive, negative, positive, negative, and then positive, negative out there. It's just a um, simple series wiring. So I'm gonna make sure this is all good. So I start with one end, which is the positive, make sure that lines up. That's good. And then just connect these down the row. And then the final one. There we go. And all we need to do is just kind of shove this through the little hole. There we go, finished battery pack. Last thing to do is to test the voltage, make sure we're getting the right voltage out of it. And that is all there is to it. So each one of these cells is four volts, somewhere thereabouts. So I should be getting yeah, somewhere around like 15, 16 volts, something like that out of it. 15 volts, looks like everything is good. So now I have my two battery cartridges complete. And the robot only uses one battery cartridge at a time. I just have the other one for backup so I can have it on the charger and then just swap it out. Now you can charge this as a standard 4S battery, um, unbalanced, you could charge it that way since they are the exact same cells, or you could just open it up and individually charge each cell. We'll see how I end up doing it, but either way is perfectly fine. So now I have the battery cartridges done, I've got the motor cartridges done. Now the um, last and final step is to put everything into the chassis. 
So um, yeah, as always, um, thanks for watching. Check out um, any more updates to my channel on my Facebook page, and I'll see you next time.